Hello everyone, it's Jamal Thomas. Welcome to the Progressive Soapbox. Guys, I want to thank you for the kind words. Um, I am out the hospital. I'm still in right much pain. I'm on narcotics. But I really wanted to do this story. So, let's talk about Elizabeth Warren. Let's talk about Elizabeth Warren. Elizabeth Warren is always a, somewhat of a complex topic to me. I consider her to be this kind of um, enigma wrapped in a question, wrapped in a riddle stuffed inside of a flaming bag of poo. The Wall Street Journal article that I just read does not help that idea at all. I'm, I'm going to read a very particular part, but I find this article interesting. And I, let's talk about it after. President Obama tried to move us forward with health care coverage by using a conservative model that came from one of the conservative think tanks that had been advanced by a Republican governor in Massachusetts. She said during an interview in her Senate office last week, now it's time for the next step. And the next step is single payer. And Lowell, Miss Warren said, there's broad support for raising the minimum wage, expanding Social Security, forgiving student loan debt, installing tougher federal regulations on the financial services industry. Democrats, she said, would do better if they campaigned on a progressive platform rather than blurring the lines between themselves and Republicans. The progressive agenda is America's agenda, she said. It's not like we're trying to sell stuff people don't want. It's not that at all. It's that we haven't gotten up there and been as clear about our values as we should be, or as clear and concrete about where we're going, how we're going to get there. The last part annoys me. The last part annoys me. Do, does Elizabeth Warren honestly believe that the reason the Democrats has lost on this massive level, thousands of legislative seats, all power, in the federal government was because they weren't clear about their values. I suggest it's the opposite. They were perfectly clear about their values. Their values being, give me cash and I will give you legislation to cater to your whims. I will parrot a particular thing as a Democrat, meaning I will talk like FDR, but the things that I'm going to do is like Ronald Reagan. Because ultimately I'm representing our constituents, people who are paying us. You have a political system that depends on money to run. It's literally flooded with cash. One of the Republicans, I think the guy's name was Jolly, said they spent like 75% of their time calling for money, calling for cash. If you knew that the majority of the people who get elected, let's say like 90%, are the people who raise the most money, what are you going to do? Spend time raising more money or deal with your constituents, your voters? going to deal with the people who are paying you and that's essentially what's taken place over the past 40 50 years the democratic party has been just as flooded with cash as the republican party and you can look at the legislation they pass versus what the public wants even right now single payer the public is on board for single payer the majority of the public wants single payer democrats the left-leaning party in this country are not you must ask the interesting question of why aren't they why aren't they in line with what the public wants? Why not? Now, she's making this point that, oh, they just haven't shown their values. No, they've shown their values. Their values have been pretty clear. I'd argue that Obamacare is a statement of values, leaving millions of people uncovered, still putting people in massive amounts of debt, rates going about 50%. I understand you're saying that the next step is single payer. I'd argue that there is no step that Obamacare would have fixed. None. Trump care will be worse. I don't like this sugarcoating what your party is and that your party, for the most part, bends to cash. Because, look, it's, it's pretty basic in a sense. I'm giving you money through campaign donations, through super PACs, whatever. I'm giving you money to get elected. And when you get elected, you're going to do favors for me because I gave you that money. And if you don't do those favors for me, you won't get my money again. Not just not get my money again. I will put money up against you. I'll put money up against you. Meaning the conversation that you're having in Washington is between oligarchs. The public has nothing to do with that particular conversation. These parties are just minor degrees. That's all they are. Many of the things they refuse to talk about are things that would adversely affect the people who are paying them. When Tom Perez as DNC chair and Bernie Sanders is sitting side by side. Bernie Sanders makes the statement about the plutocrats and fighting the billionaires and having to take these guys on.
Tom Perez sets himself on fire, runs out the studio screaming. There was no way he could have that conversation. Because having that conversation would adversely affect their ability to get money from those people. The same people who influences their votes and their policies and their regulations. She's being disingenuous with that last part. That's the point I'm getting at. Um, I can't help but think that statement sounds like Bernie Sanders. I also can't help but think that Elizabeth Warren was probably already there. That's probably just where her bearing was. Whether she said it or not is besides the point. That's probably where she already was. That's problematic, though. Now, I believe that when Elizabeth Warren gets up every morning, she looks in the mirror, she wipes her eyes, she ties her hair back, and she says, if I can punch a banker in the throat this morning, it will be a good day. I'm saying it with a Batman voice, because that's how I think she says it in the morning when she's looking at herself. I believe that drills down into her. I believe that aspect of her is honest and true. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is doing God's work. That's a good aspect. She gets a gold star for that. Now, my thing is, is it possible to have that tenor with regards to banks, to Wall Street, the economy, income inequality, and not have these other things on the agenda? Meaning, if I feel this way about Wall Street and income inequality and about the way our economic system is rigged on behalf of plutocrats, then yeah, I would probably also feel some kind of way about single-payer health care. I would probably also feel some kind of way about student loan forgiveness and about free college. Question is, why is she saying these things now? Why are these things being brought up now? Why not then? Not just brought up now and not then. 2016, Sanders is running against Clinton in the primaries. Everybody understood that it was Hillary Clinton's turn. All the Democrats, at least, understood it was Hillary Clinton's turn. And they assumed that she was inevitable. The FBI investigation hanging over her head that could indict her and perp walk Hillary Clinton out of the house. Nope, not going to happen. Nope, not going to happen. WikiLeaks showing that the State Department, Hillary Clinton was monetizing the State Department for a Clinton Foundation. Nope, doesn't matter. Polls showing that she does worse against every other Republican. Polls showing that she's the most hated candidate in the history of candidates with the exception of Donald Trump. Nope. She's inevitable. She's what the American public wants. Despite what the polls saying that the American public doesn't want her. Out, come the, out from the wilderness comes a wild man. He's holding a broadsword. He has all this armor on. He's a barbarian. He's speaking with this thick Brooklyn accent. And yet, he's from the tiny state of Vermont. Nobody gave him a chance. They assumed he had zero chance. He was like 60 points down. Nobody even knew who Bernie Sanders was. With the exception of people who were hardcore, you know, into po hardcore politics. And yet, this man would get on stage. He would open his mouth. And things would rattle in people. He would shake their spine. He would shake it. It was difficult to sit there and listen to what he was saying and not be moved and shaped and changed by the things he was saying. It is the richest country in the history of the planet. Are you telling me we can't provide health care for our citizenry? Do we care enough about the value of a human being to say that that person has worth? And if that person is born in America, that person will get health care. That person will have the capacity to go to college. That person, if they're working, will get a wage that would allow them to live a decent life. This world can be different. This country can be different. And I'm goddamn Bernie Sanders. People believed it. They felt it. On a gut, gut level, they felt it. Whether or not Sanders was going to be able to articulate each and everything he wanted to do was somebody really relevant. His tenor position to which he was going to take was going to be to the benefit of the American public. We understood this, or at the very least we believed it, because for the entire time he was in Congress, he showed a political carriage to make us believe that was the case. He starts winning states. What about Massachusetts? Massachusetts is coming up. 
What is this Elizabeth Warren going to do? What is the progressive darling going to do? She's the darling of progressives, certainly. Elizabeth Warren is going to come out for Bernie Sanders. The calls get louder. Elizabeth Warren, what are you doing? Are you going to support Bernie Sanders or not? It was the not. Massachusetts came and passed, and Elizabeth Warren did not support Bernie Sanders. Sanders lost Massachusetts by the slimmest of margins. It was less than, point, less than 1%. Now, this created a problem. We thought this woman was progressive. The things that she was saying kind of lended itself to being in the leftist camp. How are you supporting Hillary Clinton over somebody who's your ideological twin? How does that happen? And you can understand that created angst, ire, discontent in progressive circles with regards to how they viewed Elizabeth Warren. That persists to this day. Now, I am making this point, though, that all of these things that Elizabeth Warren just said in this Wall Street Journal article are things she probably believed even back in 2008. She was probably always for single payer. She was probably always wanted this debt forgiveness for college and all this other stuff. Whether she would say it or not is a different question. That's a different question. So, yes, she sounds like Bernie Sanders because for the most part, the stuff that she's going for probably was like Bernie Sanders. The difference is political cowardice. Political cowardice. She full well bought into the myth that Hillary Clinton was inevitable. And it being inevitable, if I support Bernie Sanders here, I'm going to end up on Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton's naughty list. I don't want to be on their naughty list. I want to have the ear of the president. And I'm not going to get that ear of the president if I support Bernie Sanders. Guess what? You're not going to get it anyway because you're a person lost. Your person lost. That precious vagina is not going to break the glass ceiling. And I, I'm saying that, and I joke that way because she used the fact that she was a woman to disgusting degrees. Like the idea that you're going to call Bernie Sanders a, a, a um, sexist. And mind you, they did the same thing to Obama, this whole idea of Obama boys. This is just political gamesmanship to them. She lost. You're not going to get the ear of the president because... The ear of the president is not the person who you thought it was, going to, it was going to be. Now, I make the point that this is more along the lines of political cowardice. Political courage, for example, would be chaining yourself to a black woman during the civil rights movement. Fighting or protecting a gay congressman against a homophobic Republican. Calling yourself a socialist to distinguish yourself in regards to your value set. From the Democratic Party, despite being in a capitalistic country. These things are values that he took on. He put a stake in the ground. He didn't go to the country, he bought the country to him. Meaning, this guy is the most popular co politician in this country. He didn't change to do that. He was himself. The public came to him. I'm making this point that yes, Elizabeth Warren probably believes this stuff. My issue with Elizabeth Warren. It's political cowardice. Her coming out with this is political opportunism. But in an odd, strange, and funny and ridiculous way, the political opportunism wouldn't have been necessary if it wasn't for the original inciting political cowardice. And one last point, Standing Rock. Elizabeth Warren didn't say squat about Standing Rock until Obama came out and said, okay, I'm going to prevent them from doing the drilling here. This is your land. The day later, she comes out with a tepid statement in support of the tribes. I'm making the point that the positions that she take are not leadership positions. They're all clear. Now I can walk across the street. Sanders were taking positions based on a certain moral integrity. I'm making the point that she puts her political values beyond her human values. That's the point I'm making. That's problematic to me, and I completely dislike it. Even in that interview with Jenk Uger, where she's having these, the way she's talking about the primaries as if it was this fair contest. Does WikiLeaks exist? I wanted Jenk Uger to show her WikiLeaks and say, hey, is this true? Does this exist? How are you saying it's a fair contest if they were cheating in that particular primary? How? Why didn't you support Bernie Sanders in the primaries? 
Now, I just gave you my reasons why I didn't think she supported him. I think she honestly believed Hillary Clinton was going to win. In the same way that Huffington Post had Hillary Clinton winning by 98% on the day Hillary Clinton lost to reality show hosts, I think Elizabeth Warren probably was shattered with a lot of the other Democrats when reality shows beat the stuffing out of Hillary Clinton. That's what I think. Political cowardice is a problem. Now, if you get a political win that's progressive, yes, she would tow the political win with you. If you get a centrist win, she would tow that centrist win also. I haven't seen anything that makes me think she's willing to antagonize the party, to use her value set to go against the party. She seems to meld herself into whatever the party means, even if it's not within her particular ideology. Meaning, no, she's not going to attack Obama over the drone murders. They're giving 95% of the wealth to the top 1%. She's not going to do that. She's not going to do that. She feels that she has a little bit more room to run now that they lost thousands of seats. That's the only reason she's saying this. Now, let me know if you think I'm right or if I'm wrong. I consider this to be political cowardice. I consider this to be her actual and real position. And I consider what took place in the primaries and what took place in regards to even the last administration with some degree political cowardice political cowardice she has chance to strut in this case because I think she believes that the American public is where she is and so she gets a little bit more clout with the fact that her party has lost on such a massive level so fair enough maybe she's trying to reshape the values of the party in that sense but a leader I did not see I saw somebody who's willing to meld themselves into their party's ideology and that is problematic at best. Tell me what you think. You think I'm right, wrong, or being too harsh? Or am I missing something? I figure this is either one of two things is true. Either Elizabeth Warren believes this and believed this from the beginning, which meant that what she her role in Congress and supporting the Democratic Party was, was somewhat sad. At that point, I mean, because understand, if she's supporting the Democratic Party and she's saying these are her values, the Democratic Party is in no way in this camp. She's in Sanders' camp. The Democratic Party is not with her on this. So her melding herself into what the Democratic Party is, is something against her values. Now, if Hillary Clinton would have won, would she have done the same thing? If she did it in 2000 in the Obama administration, why would I have any belief that she would have did something different in Clinton's administration? They lost. They lost everything. So now she has freedom to some degree to strut. And that's what I think she's doing. I think these are her values. My problems with Elizabeth Warren is not necessarily her progressive bona fides. It's her political courage. It's her political courage. The ability to be able to say and speak truthful things. Even in this article, this bottom part, is massively disingenuous. And the Jenk Uger conversation, or that, that interview, massively disingenuous and dodged one question after the next when it came to her talking about her party it's problematic man if I can't trust you to do the right thing because you're always going to be looking out for the benefit of a party that's problematic at best let me know what you think let me know what you think I'll leave it at that alright guys if you enjoy the content feel free to share write subscribe you can always support the work through Patreon thank you